It's the mystery box challenge and I have a box full of stuff that was sent to me that I've never seen before. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna try to DIY it into some high-end Valentine's Day decor. So let's get started. So last October, I participated in the mystery box challenge and I had a blast. So how it all works is that somebody sends me a box and in this case, it's the week's nest. And so I'm really excited to open this. And then I send a box to somebody and it goes all the way around. In each box that we receive, we don't know the contents of the box, but we are going to have to create DIYs from the contents of that box. Okay, so this time it was anything goes up to a $15 limit before it's like it had to be all Dollar Tree stuff. We shall see what she decided to do. Here we go. So she sent a card. Natalie, can't wait to see what you create with these challenge items. I know it will be great. Nicole with a smiley face. Well, I'm excited because I'm always up for a good challenge. So I'm gonna set the challenge items aside for now. There's challenge one and challenge two. I haven't seen this at my Dollar Tree. It's a little home sign. It has a, like a little light that you can light it up. So that's kind of fun. So that's a Dollar Tree item. Ooh, faux leather ribbon. And I actually have some of this, but not this exact color. So I love this. This is gonna be fun to work with. Cool, it's like a little bracket to maybe hang something from. She sent me some good stuff, I'm really excited. All right, so a canvas. We could change it up, we'll see what we do here. Now, this is a cute frame. I don't know if she got this at the Dollar Tree or not, but I haven't seen it at mine, so this is really cute. I don't even know how I DIY that because that's kind of cute all by itself. All right, some of these craft cubes. Those can come in handy on something, I'm sure. That's cute ribbon, I like that. It's almost like a French stripe and it's a really nice color. She has a good Dollar Tree. Now for the challenge items. She says, challenge item number one, P.S. I am horrible at wrapping, LOL. <laughs> Looks good to me. I'm just gonna tear it off anyways. Okay. So these are little stickers. I'm sure we can come up with something fun with this. She went nice on me. <laughs> Let's see what challenge number two is. Okay, she... Nicole, you are really nice to me. <laughs> All right, so it's like an oval sign that I'm sure we can do something really cute with. So let me stew on this a little bit and then I will meet you back here shortly. All right, so now I've had some time to think and some DIYs came to me immediately. I knew exactly what I was gonna do with them and some that I just kind of let stew for a minute. So the first one I wanna do is I wanna knock out of the way my first challenge item, which was this oval round. Now I'm gonna pepper through this episode some free printables to kind of help you accomplish the look that I'm doing if you wanted to kind of try and recreate it. All right, so for this DIY, what I was thinking is that we could combine the welcome sign, the oval round, the wood cubes and the home sign and we're gonna mush them all together and make a really awesome new sign. I first start out by staining the oval in a briar smoke gel stain and letting that fully dry. Then while it's drying, I take the welcome sign and remove the plastic on the back. Well, it's really the front, <laughs> but we're gonna be using it as the back. And then I spray painted it, which was honestly kind of unnecessary. So you could skip that part and just move on to spray painting the inside part in a matte white finish. And I did two coats. So the one thing with Dollar Tree is their stuff tends to end up being a little lightweight looking. And so what I thought we could do to solve that and kind of beef it up is I have some leftover one by two from my fireplace build. So this is free to me, but you can get a one by two, like eight feet long for like two bucks so it's really inexpensive but what i was thinking we could do is do a miter frame around it just to kind of give it a little bit more substance and then we can stain it out to match the oval now we're going to get a little bit powerful and we're going to go ahead and use my miter saw now you don't have to use a miter saw for this you could use a little miter box that's about 10 to 12 dollars they're really compact and you do it by hand but i love my power tools they make my life so much easier and help me to 
to do really cool things. One of my things is, is I like to demystify the use of power tools. It's not that hard. You just have to be a little bit safe and precautious. I've got my safety glasses here. I might as well just go ahead and put them on right now. So we're, we've got our eyes protected. Here's how we're gonna do this super scientific. We're gonna first do a 45 degree angle cut on one end. So we just cut that off at a 45 degree angle and we are gonna take our little center of our frame, I guess. <laughs> and then we're gonna line it up right on the edge of that point like so, do you see that? And then we're gonna take our pencil and make a mark. And you can just kind of flip the wood over so it cuts at the right angle again and it will work and you don't have to swing it back and forth if you don't want to, but this is a little easier. So we're just gonna make that cut. Perfect, and so there you can see. And now all we need to do is do it all the way around. And then we can stain it. So we are gonna just use the light out of this home sign and it pops out really easy. So we wanna put a hole in the back of our sign for this little light. Now, if you don't wanna buy the whole home sign, they sell the little tea lights at Dollar Tree. Now, this is a one and a half inch hole saw and honestly, they're a little tricky to kind of switch out. So I'm gonna attach a video that I used to figure that out. We're gonna take our one and a half inch hole saw we're gonna put it into our drill, make sure it's open big enough. Hand tightened, really tight. So you see that the bit sticks out. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna just center this up and drill a hole. Now if it's not exact, it's not the end of the world because it's gonna be hidden behind our sign. Now we take everything back inside and we are going to add white stripes on a diagonal using some washi tape, which honestly, I'm not really that impressed with. I need to find some washi tape that sticks down a little bit better. Now, since the wood was stained, we are going to use some matte Mod Podge to seal the edges to prevent paint from bleeding. Then we are going to take some white chalk paint and do one to two coats of paint. Then we're going to peel back the tape. Since we're doing a Valentine's theme, I made a stencil on my Cricut machine that says love. This was an image that I found in their pre-made area, so it was pretty simple to put together, and I apply this to the sign. Now, if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, that is okay, I have you covered. I have this printable for you that's not exactly the same, but very close, and you can apply it by using some graphite paper and trace it onto your plaque, and then you can hand paint it in maybe even using a paint pen to make it simpler for you. Now back to the stencil, we seal the edges of the stencil by using matte Mod Podge, and then we take some black chalk paint and fill in the stencil. Now here's where I had a little oops-a-daisy. When I peeled back my stencil, it also peeled back some of my paint on my stripes. Now I'm kind of hit and miss on this happening to me and I'm not exactly sure what is causing it, but if you have any tips for me, uh, that would be awesome because I haven't been able to figure out the trick here. But it was a, an easy fix. All I did is went back in and filled in a little bit of paint with the white chalk paint and you couldn't really tell. Once everything is fully dry, I sand it down to look a little bit more rustic. And I went ahead and did the frame while I was doing this just so that the stain that I sanded off didn't tarnish up our white backdrop. Okay, 
and now it's finally time to assemble it all. I take four of our craft cubes and glue them in areas where I know that it will be hidden by the plaque using Gorilla Hot Glue. And then I hot glue on the sign. Then I flip it over and I hot glue our tea light into place. Next is time to attach our frame and I use a combination of E6000 and hot glue. And that's it. Now this is mostly Dollar Tree items and some scrap wood for the frame. And if you were making this, you could easily recreate this for under $5. And I think it's really cute and I adore how it turned out. And it looks so good with the lights off. And it also looks great with the lights on. But what do you think? How do you think I handled this challenge item? You'll have to let me know in the comment section. So today's episode is part of a collaboration that's put together by Courtney from Creative on the Cheap. And I love this challenge, it's so much fun. If you haven't checked out her channel, make sure you pop on over to her. When I first saw this little hook, I knew exactly the perfect thing for it because I have this bird cage that I picked up on clearance at Michael's after I think spring and it was like on 70% clearance so it was really inexpensive and I've been meaning to do something with this and what I thought is we could connect this with this but you know that's kind of boring like that so obviously we've got to do a little bit more than that and they don't match so what I thought we could do is paint this out in a similar color finish and so now they match but even like that that's kind of boring and not very valentine -y or romantic so then I picked up this actual silver bowl at a thrift store it was half off and I think it made it um, three dollars and they're really pretty and I thought I could do a little something in it this way but then I flipped it over and I took a Dollar Tree glass vase and I set it on top and how pretty and luxurious does that look so I thought this would make a really cool candlestick and I'm gonna actually just hot glue this into place and if I wanted to ever separate it hot glue is strong enough to hold it into place but also if you you can yank it off and and it will peel up as well so it's kind of awesome that way I use tacky putty to secure it to the bottom of the bird cage. That way, if I want to remove it down the road, I can. I hot glue floral foam to the bottom of the cage and start to arrange some pink peonies and roses in a U shape around the candlestick so you can still see the silver base peeking through. Then I add a battery operated candle from the Dollar Tree that I've had for years now. I use some drywall anchors to screw the hook into the wall in my guest bedroom, which I still need to finish by the way, so that should be coming up here soon. And I just wanna thank Nicole for hooking me up with this hook for this birdcage arrangement. I absolutely adore this finished look. It's very romantic, it adds a lot of ambiance, and it's perfect for Valentine's Day or any time of year. Now, if you wanna see who I sent my box to, then you're gonna to wanna to stick with me to the very end. I have word that she was a little freaked out by the shape of the box. So stick with me if you wanna find out who that is. My next DIY is gonna use the ribbon from the box. If you've watched my channel before, you know that I love topiary trees and you know a little hack that I like to use sometimes is using a wire 
coat hanger. If you have any of these in your closet, they're free, they're sturdy, and they are gonna work perfect for what we're gonna do now. I take a small terracotta pot from the Dollar Tree and paint it out in a black chalk paint and let that dry. And then I shove in a small piece of floral foam and cover that up with some moss. Then I take apart my hanger, and this type of hanger is actually perfect because it's doubled up on the hook area and it has the cardboard bottom, which I just clip off. And then I untwist the hanger and you'll see that it already has the perfect foundations of a heart shape. And then all I need to do is finish shaping it into that heart and then twist it together at the bottom and create our form. And then I shove that into the floral foam. Then I have this tiny ivy left over from my Christmas topiaries that I had picked up at the Hobby Lobby. And I just twist it around the wire hanger, hot glue it into place so that it looks like a real ivy plant that is now shaped in a heart shape. This is really easy to do and very therapeutic. Then I wrap the top part of the terracotta pot in the ribbon and glue it into place. Then I make a little bow and glue that over the seam. And this topiary is so adorable. I just love how it turned out. And it just goes to show you that you might wanna keep those metal hangers that you've been wanting to toss around after all, instead of replacing them, because you can create the most beautiful things. But what do you think? So our next DIY, I'm gonna be using this frame that was in the box. And honestly, I liked it as is. But then I thought on it, and I, then I thought we could use our next challenge item, which were these stickers that are kind of like glued up looking things. We're just going to put the stickers around the outside edge of the top and the two sides. Then I tape off the front and the back with painter's tape to protect it while we paint two coats in this onyx colored paint, which is actually kind of a metallic bronze finish. And then I took a scrap piece of wood that I had on hand and I didn't even need to cut it and I painted that out in the same finish. Then I glued it to the center of this wood using E6000 and hot glue. Now I have another printable for you that says PS I love you in four different fonts. And I cut that out and put that into the little slot. Now I have a really cute picture frame for my bedroom nightstand of me and my Valentine. This was so quick and easy to put together, but I'm just curious how you think I did with this challenge item. All right, last but certainly not least, I am gonna be using this faux leather ribbon. Now, on my Christmas gift idea video, I showed you how to make some blingy earrings on a Cricut machine. Well, I wanted to show you another option if you don't have a Cricut machine. I am providing a free printable for a pattern to cut these out by hand. So just take the free printable that I've provided in the link below and use it as a pattern to cut out the earrings in the color of your choice.
Next, I cut out the heart pattern and traced it onto some shimmery gold vinyl and cut that out and stuck it onto the earrings like a sticker. But you could actually use real stickers if you'd like to. Then I took my pointy hook and poked a hole near the top for an earring hook and that's it. But because I don't have a very steady hand, I also wanted to cut it out on my vinyl cutting machine to kind of show the difference. And I love these cute Valentine's earrings. Obviously the vinyl cutter is a little more precise than my hand cutting, but both versions look super cute. And I'm just curious if you can even tell the difference. But either way, these would make great gifts. So I just want to thank Nicole from The Week's Nest so much for sending me such a fun box to put together for these Valentine's DIYs. I really hope that you liked them. All right, so I sent my box to Kristen K. And she was, she was a little scared by the box. I told her not to worry. So if you want to see what I sent her, you're going to want to pop onto her channel next. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to tell you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.